We all know the game of rock, paper, scissors. Rock smashes scissors, scissors cuts paper, and paper covers rock. Let's make the game a little bit more interesting by adding a new strategy, a chainsaw. Chainsaws absolutely obliterate paper, but they're not invulnerable. Rocks still break chainsaws, and scissors can depower chainsaws by cutting off their electrical supply. Overall, payoffs look like this. If the row player and the column player both choose the same strategy, no money exchanges hands. For almost all the other outcomes, the player with the superior object wins a dollar, and the player with the defeated object loses a dollar. The one exception is the chainsaw paper outcome. As I said before, chainsaws absolutely obliterate paper. What that means here is that the player who used chainsaw will win $3, and the player that used paper will lose $3. Your puzzle for today is to figure out how to best play this game. We all know that the solution to rock, paper, scissors is to play rock one-third of the time, paper one-third of the time, and scissors one-third of the time. This game is different for two reasons. First, it adds chainsaws to the mix, and second, one of the payoffs associated with chainsaws are more heavily weighted than the others. So there are two speed bumps that you need to overcome as you're thinking through how to solve this one. And while you're thinking about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. The hint for today is that you are thinking about mixing among more than just two strategies, which is a topic that I cover at the end of Chapter 3 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. Are you ready for the answer? Okay, let's start. To begin, it's clear you're going to want to include Chainsaw in your strategy some portion of the time. Assuming that your opponent is going to play paper, at least with some probability, taking advantage of the fact that Chainsaw obliterates those paper strategies makes it look like a very attractive component in your final strategy. Based on that, you may think that it would be clever to include Scissors in your strategy as well. That's because Scissors defeats Chainsaw. So if you suspect that your opponent is going to play Chainsaw quite a bit of the time, you can play Scissors and take advantage of that. And you'll also get some advantage against Paper as well, although it won't be nearly as good as what Chainsaw would do under that opposing strategy. However, playing Scissors is actually getting a little bit too clever. Think about Rock instead. Like Scissors, Rock counters Chainsaw. The improvement here, though, is that it also counters the counter. If your opponent were to play scissors in an effort to counter chainsaw, not only can you defeat chainsaw by choosing rock, you can also defeat scissors with it. As a result, rock is the better counter, and it's quite possible that it completely eliminates the need to play scissors at all. As such, what I want to do now is think about this game as an interaction with just three strategies for each player. Rock, Paper, and Chainsaw. We'll solve the game as though those were the only strategies that could be played, and then after we've done that, we'll verify that we wouldn't want to add scissors to the mix, given our expectations about what optimal strategies look like. Even if we've narrowed it down to those three strategies, we still have to think about how to properly mix among them. And as you're working through that, there are a couple of different levels of thinking that you might have. The initial thought that you might get is that you should play chainsaw very often. After all, chainsaws obliterate paper. There's $3 in value whenever you match up a chainsaw against your opponent's paper. So you might want to incorporate that into your strategy most often to exploit that and gain that $3 in value as often as you can. But this is a strategic game, and that's where the second level of thinking comes into play. If you recognize that your opponent has that incentive to abuse chainsaws, 
perhaps you should play the counter to that. Specifically, if you want to counter your opponent's incentive to play Chainsaw, if we've decided that Scissors is not the best counter to it, that would mean that you should focus on playing a lot of Rock instead. And that is indeed what you should ultimately do. Now, there is a fancy way of formally calculating what those mixing probabilities should look like. And if you're really interested in that, you can check out the textbook or some of the other videos that I have on that subject. Right now, though, I just want to go through this as intuitively as I can. Imagine that you're the column player, and you want to counteract the row player's incentive to take $3 from the chainsaw paper outcome. Well, the way that you can do that is by playing rock three times as often as you would otherwise. Why does that cancel things out? Well, if you look at the bottom left corner of the chainsaw rock outcome, the row player is going to get a negative one three times as often as they would normally by playing Chainsaw. And that exactly counterbalances the incentive to get the $3 from the Chainsaw paper outcome. From here, the rest of the ones make filling in the remaining ratios easy. Your opponent can work through the same logic that we just did. And as a consequence, they're going to want to play Rock a good portion of the time. To prevent Rock from running away with things, you need to adopt some sort of countermeasure. And here, that countermeasure, of course, is to play paper. But you don't need to go overboard, because Rock is only extracting $1 in value out of the chainsaw. As a consequence, we're going to integrate paper into our strategy a default one portion of the time. Finally, we need to do something to counterbalance paper. That, of course, means playing Chainsaw some portion of the time. But we don't need to go overboard. Paper is only extracting $1 in value out of rock, and so to counterbalance that, we only need to add a default singular share of Chainsaw to our mixture. And there we have it. We'll play rock three times as often as we would Paper or Chainsaw, with Paper and Chainsaw being played the same portion of the time. If we convert those ratios into probabilities, we have a 60% chance of playing rock, 20% chance of playing paper, 20% chance of playing chainsaw, and lowly scissors we will never play. Now let's verify that our strategy is good. This is a zero-sum game. Whatever I win, you lose, and vice versa. And as a consequence, if our strategy is not exploitable, then by playing it, we are guaranteeing ourselves at least an expected outcome of zero dollars. We will never lose something. And in fact, because scissors is a bad strategy here, it's possible that if our opponent selects scissors, we might actually gain something. Let's first check to make sure that our opponent can't exploit us with rock. Well, 60% of the time we'll break even, and in the remaining 40% of the time, we're evenly divided between a loss of $1 and a gain of $1. Those cancel each other out. And thus, our expected outcome playing against Rock is to break even. Our opponent can't exploit us. This also reveals why that initial intuition to play Chainsaw the most frequently was wrong. If we were to play Chainsaw much more regularly than that 20%, it would be very easy for our opponent to exploit us by playing rock a higher percentage of the time. Can our opponent exploit us with paper? Nope. Although this one is a little bit more complicated. The 20% of the time we play paper, we immediately break even. 60% of the time we'll play rock and lose. And under that circumstance, our opponent will win a dollar and we'll lose a dollar. However, that is exactly offset by the fact that 20% of the time we'll be playing Chainsaw, and when we get that outcome, our opponent is going to be really hurting. They're going to lose $3 and we'll gain $3. And thus, that 20% chance of gaining 3 is exactly offsetting the 60% chance of losing $1. Thus, overall, 
this outcome is going to break even in expectation. As a consequence, our opponent can't exploit us. What about chainsaw? Well, here it's basically the same thing, but in reverse. 20% of the time, we'll have a draw. 60% of the time that we play rock, they'll lose a dollar and we'll gain a dollar. But that's exactly offset by the 20% of the time that we play paper and they win $3 and we lose $3. Once more, the expected outcome here is for everyone to break even. And as a consequence, our opponent cannot exploit us. The final thing to check here is to make sure that our opponent cannot sneak in scissors and harm us. And in fact, if they try doing scissors here, they're going to be in trouble. 60% of the time, they lose a dollar, whereas the remaining 40% of the time, split evenly between paper and chainsaw outcomes, they gain a dollar. Thus, in expectation, they actually lose money by playing scissors, and we gain money. And thus, by adopting this strategy, we cannot lose, and if our opponent makes a mistake by playing scissors, we will be winning in expectation. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.